about it. A lot of people want to try psilocybin mushrooms. Maybe I can help. My truffles trip, truffles, also known as psilocybin mushrooms, was, uh, uh, you can be the judge. Maybe some of you out there want this kind of experience. I can tell you this, partially it was fun, and partially it wasn't, and I did learn something. Okay. I get a phone call, and a friend of mine messages me saying, mushrooms tonight? It's vegetarian. And I think, yeah, sure. But honestly, I didn't know he meant like truffle mushrooms. He put a mushroom symbol and I just thought maybe he wanted to go out to eat. Yeah, my mind is so far away from everything. So I said, yeah, sure, I'll come along. And then as the conversation progresses, I realized that, yeah, he means, he means magic mushrooms. He puts like a, a unicorn in a rainbow and I think, Sure, why not? It's one of those things that I've always wanted to do. I've done dimethyltryptamine. Let's give psilocybin mushrooms a shot. Could I have done without it? The psilocybin mushrooms, yeah, it has its benefits. It can be fun at the beginning, at the beginning. And then it can turn into a nightmare. And this may not happen to you, but in my case, Yikes. Anyway, so I get to his place and I choose to record the entire experience on my phone, which doesn't happen. I recorded the first bit, me wearing a cowboy hat and a t-shirt tied around my neck with a cape, mini cape, back cape. But I'm not quite sure how much I'm supposed to take, but he just opens the entire bag and gives me 16 grams he has 16 grams. Later on, only for me to find out that you're only supposed to take 3 to 5 grams each. We're 10 grams over, 11 grams over the average uh, dosage. So anyway, we take these shrooms. And I take a cowboy hat and I put it on. I'm getting ready for this, right? I'm getting ready for this. And I've done some research prior to the experience, so I should have roughly know what's going on. But until the walls start to breathe, that is when my heart rate starts to come up. The color in the room becomes saturated, and it becomes alive with movement, only then to be followed with extreme <laughs> giggles. I've never been so happy. Well, I have, but it was a long time. I guess the only thing that can even come close is when you're watching Vine videos on YouTube. Right? We all know what that's like. So I'm watching YouTube on his TV, Julian Smith, and we're waiting for more uh, waves. And that's exactly what happened. As I turn to my friend and I say, hey, is your TV busted? Because that guy's face is messed up. It starts to warp and shift and turn and twist into all these different shapes. It looked as if it was in front of me and it was warping. It didn't look like my eyesight was warping, so to speak, more so the things in front of me. If you can imagine a camera that only focuses on one thing, right now it's focusing on my face and everything around me, like my sink should be roughly blurred out, right? My monitor's here so I can see what I look like. But only my face that is in focus is bending and contorting. And as I turned to my friend to ask him this question, his face grew, his chin was like two inches away from my face, but his top of his head was like a foot that way. And just some scary stuff if you're not prepared. And he made that pretty obvious when he was freaking out. He had his fists up as if he was gonna punch me in the face. I knew that he was experiencing what I was experiencing. I didn't want to get too close. So I got up, you know, in that flight type feeling. To stay away from him, he's having his own trip. And I start to wander down the corridor of his house to make my way into the bathroom to look into the mirror. And this is where it gets kind of... Weird, if it hasn't gone weird already. You know, I've always had this fear of turning into an insect, a spider or a worm, and just watching myself fall to pieces due to my childhood. Watching TV, Spider-Man, where he grows extra limbs, or watching The Fly, where he sat there on the couch pulling his eyeball out, and then he eats it, all the pus, and freaked me out. And this was kind of like that a little bit. I looked straight into the into the mirror, right? And as I'm looking into the mirror, I'm, I'm looking at my facial hair. 
and it's like my eyesight is like a hawk. It can look straight in, it's like it just zoomed out that part of my face and I can see the individual hairs and I can see my iris just really huge, massive. I know it at this point, it's kicking in, obviously. And with this heightened depth awareness comes the sound of what sounds like insects. But I'm actually okay with this bit, kind of like that part in the fly where he just accepts the fact that he's turning into a fly and he's kind of looking forward to it. At this point I'm like, huh, this is kind of strange, but I kind of like it. I've got some sort of super awareness thing going on. And then my face starts to shift into a red color and then into a blue color and then I think, okay, it's time for me to leave and get back to everyone else. I'm not sure how long I've been in this bathroom. So I stumble down the corridor only to see somebody on the stairs looking at me that point, I'm hallucinating. So I've gone through the color shift within the room, the colors breathing within the room, extreme giggles, and now distorted faces and hallucinations. I get into the living room only to feel as if I've done this before. This entire place looks familiar. I swear I've seen this guy before, but aware. I don't spend much time around him, but for some reason I feel as if he's responsible for my condition. Then as I look at him and I see him contorting, I'm thinking, is this the shrooms? Or is there something actually going on here? Only for him to say that, yeah, I have scoliosis. Okay, I have scoliosis, my spine doesn't bend in the way it's supposed to bend, and that's why you're noticing me being distorted. It's not the shrooms, I'm like, Phew. thank God for that. But still terrifying to say the least because his face was shape-shifting into a red demon-like figure. His nose was going really long, his eyes were sinking into their sockets, and he was looking at me evil-like. And I could just feel this evil feeling urging from him, and I was going straight up paranoia at this point. I, I was ready to fight him. I was on like full-on defensive fight mode at this point. Yeah, just stay away from me. But then I knew that, you know what, it's because I've just taken shrooms. And I'm susceptible to influence and my thoughts are going pretty rampant right now. They're not being controlled by me. They are being taken on a trip. It feels as if you're being dragged by a rope and there are horses on a carriage pulling your body through dirt. Only those horses are the shrooms, and you, my friend, are the guy on the other end of the rope. Your mind, you are not in control of it. So I sat there with myself and I thought, okay, okay. I can feel all these thoughts coming up because of the shrooms. Okay. I'm not going to act on them because I know it's because of the shrooms. And I stood right in front of this guy that I was kind of freaking out about and I was like, hmm, okay, let's just observe myself and observe the thoughts coming up and realize that it's not real, it's nothing to do with me. And it allowed me to manage thought forms that came up, ideas, the urges to act in 3D and not to respond to the thoughts that are coming up to my awareness. This is what it taught me, to be more in control of what comes up. And believe me, at this point, when you have something like that happening, things around you shape-shifting and demons walking around or perceived demons because of how they're contorting and everything and you're able to sit there still and just let that energy come up and realize that it's not real that is some power when you're able to do that with that extreme circumstance in real life that becomes easy easy and that's what i'm grateful for and then my friend starts to phone up his girlfriend on the phone okay at this point, I hide my phone because I realized that after taking the phone off of him and starting to speak to her, I completely forget what it was that she had just said on the phone. Literally, I'm speaking there and it's like I just get amnesia just like that. And then I think to myself, oh, okay, this is because of the shrooms. I probably shouldn't be... Yeah, and then I gave it back to him, then he started to phone up more people, then I just took the phone off him, turned it off, and hid it. Now he thought, nah, great, you're being a party pooper, but... Some of the stuff we were saying, there were, like, anything, any secrets, nothing that we tried to keep to ourselves would stay to ourselves on shrooms, and he had an open line to everyone and anyone. Getting back to, I feel like I've done this before. I'm sat there on the couch, 
and I witness or start to experience a deja vu when it feels like you've done something before but then it happens again another deja vu which is the same deja vu and it happens again and again and again and again to the point where it feels like you've experienced that one deja vu longer than you've been around and then it completely engulfs your life experience to the point where it feels like you've experienced that one experience longer than a thousand years a couple of thousand years millennia to the point where it feels like you spent all eternity inside of a loop this is the part that i didn't like it made me feel like i was completely immortal but not only that but it felt familiar that's the thing it felt like i was in this state already and then as i sit there like this the familiarity of this cycle of the guy with this with the contorted back terrifyingly just walking around and and that's why you shouldn't allow anyone in your space when you're taking psilocybin mushrooms that you do not know because your mind is going to make up a story believe me here's the thing though and this isn't because of the shrooms i remembered that i have had this experience before inside of a dream I have dreamt this whole psilocybin mushroom experience inside of a dream that I had previously forgotten until I had activated that memory by taking the mushrooms. This was not because of the mushrooms, okay? And then I said to my friend, if I've dreamt this before, but this is the first time that I've taken psilocybin mushrooms, what comes first, the chicken or the egg type deal? I'm convinced at this point that I've done this before through dream time. Because I can literally separate this experience that I'm having with the psilocybin mushrooms. Take it, my memory to a time where I wasn't on the drug. But just waking up from a dream. Where I was encountering the exact same circumstance of me taking psilocybin mushrooms. And experiencing these things that are happening. The guy with the weird contorted face. The giggles. The room. The guy I was watching on TV. All dreamt up before I had the experience. Go figure. And then it got fun because we were trying to break the cycle. Okay, break the loop. We walked into the kitchen. I said, bro, if you start making eggs, I'm going to freak out because that's a part of the cycle. We can see what's going to happen. Then it happens. And then we just get stuck in this loop of just doing the same thing over and over again. And he goes back here again. That's his, that was his phrase for it. Back here again, back here again. I was like, he knows what I'm talking about. Right? But I was like, I've done this before done this before over and over again for hours and hours on end the trip lasted about six hours and the way we tried to break the break the mold so to speak or to break that cycle is we started eating food food breaks the cycle i opened his fridge and as soon as i put a courgette in my mouth i was like this is new strange stuff so we were going around the kitchen trying to find ways to break the cycle so that it didn't feel like an eternity of repeating hell so yeah that was my psilocybin mushroom trip. That was my truffles trip. Okay, my magic mushrooms trip. It had its highs and it also had its lows. It had moments where I was bursting out in laughter and I was grateful for this <laughs> way of expressing myself to the point where I'm studying myself and I'm becoming centered and I'm allowing myself to control my thoughts better to then witnessing a perpetuating nightmare which just didn't end. Will I ever do it again? No. Am I glad I did it? Yes. Downside of it, it took me about four to five days to get my mindset right. Like I said before, it's like being dragged around a dirt field, okay? And the shrooms are dragging your mind everywhere. And I'm used to having my mind in check, in control. So after the experience, it was literally a case of me trying to gain control of my mind again. And that lasted somewhat two or three days, five days. And honestly, it was only after a week that I was back to normal. So yeah, I'm Ryan JC. This has been your potential. This has not been a video to encourage you to take psilocybin mushrooms. It's more of an educational piece. You'll go through these phases if you do decide to take psilocybin mushrooms. The advice I'll give to you guys is only be around people who you actually know because your mind is going to come up with stories and change the environment change the environment, never stay in the same place because again, you're gonna feel like you've been there for a very long time. And yeah, this has been fun. I'm Ryan JC, Ryan James Cropper. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos like this. And I'll speak to you guys very soon.